In this video, I will show you how to do some example stoichiometry problems for reactions involving gas phase reactants and or products. From previous modules, you should be familiar with the concept of reaction stoichiometry. In other words, converting from one species in a chemical reaction to another species using the stoichiometric factor, the multiple ratio. The moles of one of the species of interest could be obtained either by its molar mass and the, um, the amount of that substance in grams, or for species in solution, it's possible to determine the number of moles from the solution concentration and volume via the molarity relationship. You should now be familiar with a third method to obtain moles for gas phase species if you've watched the ideal gas video. This method is to use the ideal gas law to solve for moles of a gas phase species in terms of its pressure, the gas's pressure, volume, the ideal gas constant R, and the temperature. We can also solve for moles of our other species of interest in the same way, and both of these are again arising from the ideal gas law. Importantly, these Conversion factors can only be used for gas phase species. The ideal gas law can be used to solve stoichiometry problems in this way with gaseous species. Let's look at an example problem. Here's the chemical reaction for the combustion of non-in in oxygen to yield gaseous carbon dioxide and water vapor. If you burn excess non-in in a sealed container, with a liter of with a volume of 0.5 liters and the sealed container has oxygen gas at a pressure of 3.25 atmospheres and temperature of 298 kelvin how many moles of co2 will you produce let's break down this problem step by step the given information is the chemical equation of interest we know that we have excess non one of our reactants we know the volume of the container, the pressure of oxygen in the container, and the temperature. What we need are how many moles of CO2 will be produced given these reaction conditions. Our strategy will be to first balance the chemical equation because we know that anytime we're doing a stoichiometry problem and we need the multiple ratio, a balanced equation is a must. Next, we'll calculate the moles of oxygen using the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Once we have the moles of oxygen, we can calculate the moles of CO2 that will be produced given that starting quantity of oxygen. Let's solve by following these steps. The balanced, balancing this reaction should be something that you're familiar with from a previous module. Calculating moles of oxygen using the ideal gas expression can be done as follows. We know the pressure, the volume, of course, the ideal gas constant R and the temperature of the sample. Importantly, pressure is in units of atmosphere, volume is in liters, and temperature is in Kelvin. If these values were given in different units, you would need to convert them to the appropriate units based on the units of the ideal gas constant. When calculating the number of moles of oxygen, I got a value of 0.066 moles of oxygen. Now, we can treat this as our standard reaction stoichiometry, thereby calculating the moles of CO2 from this many moles of oxygen. We can do this using the multiple ratio of oxygen to CO2 from the balanced equation. You can see that the coefficient in front of oxygen for the balanced equation is 14, and the coefficient in front of carbon dioxide is 9. We'll use this 14 to 9 ratio with moles of oxygen in the denominator so that units cancel appropriately. This yields a result of 0.042 moles of carbon dioxide that would be produced from the starting quantity of oxygen and excess nonane. Let's take a, a chance for you to work out another type of stoichiometry problem on your own. Here's a similar type of practice problem, so pause the video and try to work it out. Once you think you have the answer, replay the video and we'll walk through the solution together. So in this problem, what we're given is the balanced chemical equation for hydrolysis, 
the moles of water to start with, the volume of the container, the pressure, and the temperature. We need the volume of oxygen, gas, produced from the reaction with water when water decomposes. Now this is very important. Water is given in the balanced equation in the liquid form. So we can't use the liquid, we can't use water to calculate um, the volume of O2 produced directly because we can't plug moles of water into the ideal gas expression. So our strategy will be con to convert from moles of water to moles of oxygen using standard reaction stoichiometry. Then we'll convert pressure from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. The reason why we need to do this is that we can cal then calculate the volume of oxygen using PV equals nRT, assuming that um, pressure, moles, and temperature are all in the correct units. Let's walk through each step. First, converting from moles of water to moles of oxygen. This is our standard reaction stoichiometry using the multimole ratio from the balanced equation. Moles of water is in the denominator. Then we can convert millimeters of mercury, the pressure in millimeters of mercury, to the pressure in atmospheres using the conversion factor 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. Lastly, we can take this information to calculate the volume of oxygen. We can do this by multiplying the quantity of oxygen by the ideal gas constant R by the temperature in Kelvin and dividing by the pressure in atmospheres. Units will cancel appropriately and we'll get a value of 19.8 liters, which will be rounded to 20 liters for, in two, for two significant figures. Therefore, we get the answer choice if we look back at our initial problem of choice E. It's convenient to have a standard set of reference conditions used to describe an ideal gas. We call these conditions standard temperature and pressure. The volume occupied by one mole of an ideal gas can be calculated using the ideal gas relationship. Standard temperature is defined as 273.15 Kelvin, otherwise known as zero degrees Celsius. Standard pressure is defined as one atmosphere, which can of course be converted to other pressure units. Here's our mole of an ideal gas at STP. That means we know the quantity of gas, the temperature of the gas, and the pressure. We can calculate the volume therefore to be 22.4 liters. The meaning of this value is that one mole of an ideal gas no matter what its identity is, will occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. You can see that looking at this illustration. There is one mole of each of these gases, oxygen, helium, fluorine, and argon, in the, their various containers. If they're under STP conditions, all gases will occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. It's possible and also convenient to use this conversion, this molar volume as a conversion factor in some stoichiometry problems, specifically when under standard pressure and temperature conditions. Let's try an example. Here's our hydrolysis reaction from earlier in the video. If 3.0 moles of water is decomposed, what volume of H2 gas will be produced? Assume H2 gas behaves ideally and the process takes place under STP conditions. What we can do is take our three moles of water and convert to moles of hydrogen using the multimole ratio from the balanced equation. In the next step, we can use the molar volume of hydrogen at STP conditions because it's stated that hydrogen behaves as an ideal gas. Therefore, we know one mole of hydrogen will occupy 22.4 liters under SCP conditions. This is the molar volume. We'll find that the volume that three moles will occupy, three mole, or excuse me, the three moles of water, which is equal to, in this case, three moles of hydrogen, since they're in a one-to-one -one ratio, will be 67 liters. 
You could do this the long way by calculating moles of hydrogen and then using PV equals nRT to calculate the volume, and you will get the same result. This video has been a review with some example problems of how to solve uh, stoichiometry problems with gas phase reactants and products. You can use this handy uh, conversion chart as a reminder of what to do if you have gas phase reactants and products and how to find the moles of one quantity in the reaction, so long as it's of a gaseous species, and convert to moles of another quantity in the reaction, again, for gaseous species. Of course, it's possible to combine these stoichiometry problems, as we did in some examples with non-gaseous species, um, using our standard stoichiometry techniques that we've discussed in pri previous modules. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.